Welcome to the Let It Bleed podcast, a place where you can hear the liquor-fueled ramblings of two narcissistic wizards who conjure the essence of inspirational people every week and bring it straight to you. Just how do you plan on doing that? Magic. Motherfucker. And now for the wizards themselves, David Amaya and Phil Arroyo. How are you now? You know what? I'm doing okay. Oh. I really, I really can't complain, man. Things have been good. Good, good, good. Yeah. Well, you know, this is our first podcast episode of 2019, officially. That is correct, yeah. man. And it just, it feels so new. We're in a brand new day, a brand new year, and shit is, is, is weird as fuck, man. It is. It really is. So, what right now, because at the beginning of the show, I think it's important for us to get into the more important stuff, you know, of what's going on in the world, because... Given the climate, we need to stay focused and we can't, you know, let our shenanigans get too far away from us. We need to understand what's going on. Like what? Briefly. I'm so glad you asked because if you didn't, I was going to just find a way to just jam this in (laughs) because it has been really an insane uh, couple of weeks here. And um, I think gauging by Facebook which I think is like probably my, my best way to kind of see what people are interested in and talking about what people know and understand um, just at large. And people just are not really aware of how crazy things are right now and how difficult things are. Because right now we are in the 24th day of the longest shutdown in American history right. of the federal government. It's which means unprecedented shit as far as, as in our government. Like sure. like many things, yeah. It is the first time this has ever happened and hundreds of thousands of federal employees are not working right now. Right. I just got back from Washington, D.C. myself, which, you know, had nothing to do with all this, but great timing because everything was just closed down. That is true. Yeah. Wait, so but, did you feel when you were there... That you like noticed? Oh, I mean, what, ha, first of all, have you been there before? That was my first time to DC, and just kind of just striking up conversation with people around there. Like, yeah, people were a little bit uh, people were a little bit concerned. And being so central to it, I don't think there's any way that they escape like that kind of knowledge. But I, I think now we're gonna start to see really quickly here if, if you haven't already, like. You probably know somebody that maybe is a federal employee or at the very least, like, you know, like the D.C. area, because there are so many federal employees there, like they're not working. So they're not going out and spending money. They're like everybody is just is really we're seeing a like an effect in the economy right now, like a a net effect, because if you're not paying these people, essentially, you just just took a million people out of a job. So now they are desperate. And some of these stories are absolutely horrifying but people right. who can't afford medication for their kids and stuff like that people who are going hungry people who cannot who just are they're they're dying they're getting kicked out of their homes they can't um now, they you, can't get their do mortgage you think or this or is like a personal tactic or do you think this is perhaps just a way of like being stubborn and not and and withholding until he gets what he wants well I, it's it's it is a temper tantrum there's really there's no other way to put it this is also you know, kind of historic as far as uh, shutdowns go, because this is as this is really over nothing. You know, this is over a five point six billion dollars for a border wall. And there are so many. But 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 for somebody like him, it's the one thing he promised all of these people. No, for somebody like him, it's that like (laughs) he he knows because what's not really being talked about as much that's also happening right now is that the 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 Mueller inquiry and stuff like that all of these things are starting to actually come to a head and close and it's actually come out in the news so the really national recently. crisis is all a diversion and all of this other stuff the, yeah. the national crisis to to create this sort of basically if you destroy the entire infrastructure of the United it's States it's almost like he's saying like there's if, no government to if come I'm going down for, for high crimes and if treason. I'm going down the rest of this whole shit is going fucking down it's, especially because there is no crisis that is the most aggravating part about this because th- there is no border crisis see okay here i got to i got to actually get some numbers here all right so total illegals in the u.s there's 11.4 million and of those 7.5 million have been here for 10 years or more and now 52 percent of them are mexican illegals crossings are have been dropping every year since 2003 crime rate per capita of mexican immigrants is 0.7 percent that is the vast majority of uh uh, immigration violence. 
Oh, yeah, the vast majority of that is from immigration violations. And of those uh, native, native born Americans, the equivalent rate is 2.1% uh, of people who commit crimes. So as a, on a per capita basis. Now, Social Security counts illegals is paying $7 billion in assessing SS trust fund finances because they pay taxes. State government estimations of state local taxes paid by illegal immigrants. In Texas, it was $400 million. In Georgia, $250, $250 million. And in California, $300 million. And so Texas estimates illegals added $17.7 .7 billion to gross state product, contributing $424 million more than the cost of government services. Also, because more people means more economic activity, and more economic activity means more jobs, getting illegal immigrants out would cause employment in Texas to drop 2.3%. Arizona would lose 140,000 jobs. Conservative policy group study shows because they would no longer be buying stuff, deporting all illegal immigrants would cause a loss of 11 million jobs. And the study says as a result, 20 years from now, the economy would be nearly 6% or $1.6 trillion smaller than it would be if the government did not remove all of those people. So as I repeat, there is no crisis. That's from uh, Kurt Eichwald and hey, if you if you want some sources on that, I will be happy to show them to you. Now, all of these arguments have been made in bad faith. A wall would do next to nothing to stop people from coming in and would do absolutely nothing about drugs coming in. Plus, this $5.6 billion they're asking for is not the cost of the wall. Most estimates put building a wall like that at over $20 billion, and that's before factoring in the upkeep. It is fucking exhausting to counteract every bad faith argument, and that's exactly why they keep doing it. See, what's the most telling to me is that they seem, what seems to be missing from a lot of these conversations I'm seeing about this is that a funding bill for the government was passed unanimously in the Senate and would pass the House right now until the president threw a tantrum and the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell refused to allow a vote on any new bill to open the government. So there's two people holding the shit up right now, and they're literally not allowed to do it. We have bipartisan support to fund this government without that fucking wall. So, see, they don't need the president to sign it because they can totally override it with his veto. And they keep, in the House, they keep bringing bills up and passing them to fund the government. And Mitch McConnell will not even allow any of the ones that have come through to be voted on. And so, Republican senators, they, they don't want this either. Now, there are 800,000 federal workers are furloughed or working without pay over this petty demand for giant fucking effigy to to racism that will keep the most vile part of his base happy see people are being evicted from their homes and they can't get medication and literally they're just going hungry because they haven't gotten a paycheck and are about to miss a whole month of income it, not to mention the businesses around them are on the brink of folding right now because they rely on the patronage of the federal employees to keep them in business FAA inspectors are not doing proper maintenance on planes and making sure that they're even safe to fucking fly. TSA workers are calling out of work in mass. Like, this is going to ruin people's lives. It's shaving, like, whole, like, percentage points off of the GDP every goddamn day this goes by, man. Like, this is going to ruin people's lives and probably get people killed if this keeps going on. And, and this is all on the backdrop of the UK careening towards a complete self-destruction in March when Brexit triggers and they literally have no plan for what to do. And the most fucking terrifying thing of the week that I wanted to talk about are the reports that Trump wants to drop out of NATO, which I don't have t super time to get into because I know we've been at this for like a really long time. This is a super long intro, but that is a move so unsettling it would plunge the entire world into darkness and Putin has been positioning himself to take over sizable chunks of the Baltic and Europe if that happens. So it is the like the doomsday World War Three scenario I have been fearing since Trump took office. So shit is getting really fucking serious here and it, there's not a lot we can do about it. Uh, there, or there's only two people in this country who can stop this right now, and they are more than willing to take the whole country down with them. So stay informed. Don't let anyone forget who did this and why. And I am sorry that... Uh, well, you yeah. know what? I don't want to get too far away from the, the very fun and friendly topic that we're, we're getting into, you know, because this is important, absolutely important, and we want you guys to tune in and listen to us get more involved in this. But, you know... For this episode, we have my good friend, Kalina. How, how do you pronounce your name? Because I never fucking actually said her last name. Uh, my Luta. Luta. You know, she's a badass fucking manager at my job. I work a second job at, in a restaurant, as many fucking people um, do 
Um, and she just had a baby. And she just had a baby. But you know what? Kalina is one of the most badass chicks because she's a Leo. Leo gang up in the house. You know what I'm saying? Phil's over here, like, just like, whatever. <laughs> oh, no, I'm looking at notes and no, making I'm not, sure the no, recordings no. are still good. No, I'm just fucking with you. But you <laughs> know what? That's one thing Leos take pride in is when we find other Leos that we like, we're always like, yeah, that's what's up. And whether you believe in that or not, that's not to deter you from this fucking conversation of this person who's a real motherfucking person who tells you what it's like in the restaurant industry and why you should be more patient if you are one of those people who finds that when you go to a restaurant, you are not being taken care of as well as you should be or you're just not getting the satisfaction that you should be. And also to the people who work in restaurants, why you need to step your fucking game up. So it's both just like anything else. Anyways, this is what we're going to get into in this podcast. She's great. I'm not going to ruin it any more than that. I don't know anything else you have to say, Phil. Oh, no. I just thought it was a great conversation where we really kind of, you know, we took those the themes and kind of applied them to just general patience and understanding and, you know, really looked at, uh, you know, the the restaurant industry as a as a microcosm of society. Because that's something and, we all are part of. Oh, you, yeah. You, her, and I, we all have that, like, commonality because, like, we're we're all part of this age where that's, like, that's something that not we all... Not to we had a shitload of crazy stories that were funny. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so let's not make the people wait anymore. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and get into this, guys. Obviously, stay tuned to the end to know where to subscribe to all this shit. The Let It Bleed podcast. We're on all the places where you can go ahead and find podcast episodes at Let It Bleed cast. You know, we're going to pl- plug... Ugh, plug all of our personal information at the end here, but just let's get right into it with Kalina over here. You know, let it bleed. So, uh, so <laughs> but it works like, better this so way. I had, like I had like early meetings and like all the shit to do today, mm-hmm. and so I finally like was able to even just start it, thinking about it, like getting yeah. everything all kind of connected. And there's all these wires and things I had to move. And plus, yeah. this room's usually dirty as shit before like you know everybody mm-hmm. comes over. And so, as you can see, I do a great job of like cleaning up, you know, dressing up the place. It looks like a heroin den when the rain's <laughs> out. Like I feel like it seems like we're like in fucking uh in some sort of like show or movie, like we're in Seattle or something. Or you Crack know, kids gonna pop out yeah, closet. like oh, it, 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 or train spotting almost like. I yeah. mean, we haven't done one where we we're just like doing opium the whole time, so maybe that's like the next, you know, the next frontier. I'm trying to get maybe my hands on some opium. The year, the year of the opium. The year of the opium. That would be so dope. Ever since Tombstone, I've just wanted to go smoke with some like Chinese dudes, like some opium somewhere, and just like you know, see what that feels like. That yeah, that's that's one of those like oh okay, I've only got a you know a year to live. Fuck cool, it. Fuck it. Let's go <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, that's when I would do that, but or if you had it right now, but <laughs> just, <laughs> just do a show. Just do a just show. Just do a show on opium. Yeah. Oh, well, man. one thing that people should not do in this life, if they could avoid it, is opium. It's opium. Something that people Always. should do at least once in their life. It kills more people. Yes. Like, so why yeah. the fuck would you want to try that? I I mean, opium, I don't think, in, if you smoke it, is as bad as, like, shooting it up or anything like that. I'm talking about, like, the way that the, like, Chinese, like, I, came here and, re- you know, like... I don't know enough about it. Opium. Yeah, yeah, it was more... It's not like it's not like heroin, per se. So, anyways, back to what I was saying. One thing you should not do, if you could avoid it, and it should be easy because it's probably hard to find, is opium. Something that most people should do here... At least once in their lifetime mm-hmm. to make them a better human being, per se. In this city, I'm not sure it would be that difficult. No, 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 no. no. Something, something different. I have heard the police refer to this as heroin beach. O- opium, though. Dude, it's like, I yeah. believe it. Yeah, I believe it. Right. Well, I don't like. It's it's weird when it's so out of your own experience because I don't know. Well, actually, I don't think I know anybody that like yeah. you know fucks around like that. Yeah. I can only think of one time where i've seen somebody kind of slowly descend to that and that was really like kind of sad to watch and just yeah. get into alcohol it's and out what cheap was it's legal and it's fucking 
You got alcohol, you got yeah. marijuana, you've got so many things that are better than that. And just ruin your liver the old fashioned way with a bottle of right. vodka like I'm doing right now. Straight up. And cucumber uh, and mint. Yeah. Cucumber I'm just kidding. Don't mint. do any of these things, people. <laughs> Be good. But you should, if you have not already. You should and for your cucumber. children. Make them fucking work in a restaurant. I swear. People, I think I it's like there's two types of people in Amen. this world. There's people who have worked in some sort of like service industry mm-hmm. and people who have not. Yep. And most of the time it shows. Don't get me wrong. There <laughs> Dude, are people. It definitely shows. Yeah, I'm saying most of the time. I'm going to give a little bit of leeway to the people who just like they at least just go out enough to know. Like they have the etiquette down. They right. understand or they know people. They're at least compassionate. Mm-hmm. They're empathetic. They have friends that are in the industry, that they're in the know. But there are some fucking people that just, you never want to go okay, out Okay, so I just got off of work. <laughs> just got off. I just, just had a baby. You just had a baby. Okay, so I just You've got off of work. busy day. Thank you for making <laughs> Holy shit. So I, I worked a lunch shift today. So right when I get in, get in at 11, restaurant opens at 11. Lady calls in and says, hey, I'm going to be there at 1130. Can I put my order in now? Yeah, sure. So I take your order down. Right? Why do you do that? No, don't I just do that. did it. I just, uh, I mean, dude, I just got in. I don't care. You just got it. I just <laughs> had a baby, so I really don't care. It's the least of my problems right now. So I'm like, yeah, sure. So I take it down. Hits 11.15. like, eh, I'm not going to put it in yet. Put it in around 11.18. And she comes in. She gets a sandwich. And she's like, oh, my sandwich, my fries are cold. Can I get some more? I'm like, Bitch, what the fuck? That's what the fuck you get for putting your order in before you fucking get here. Like, what right. the fuck do you want me to do? Yeah. And she's like, oh, sorry. It's like the little annoying ass things like that. Yeah. That just set you over the edge and you're just like, you know what? I'm done with this. Well, I, I do like, wait, did you actually like? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't call her a bitch oh, okay. or anything, but I was, but I had told like, her. Response. I'm like, oh, wait, this didn't just go on in your head. <laughs> Although no, I've seen, I've head. seen you, you do what I do. Specs. You do what I do, and I've learned. I think it just kind of comes naturally to us. Maybe it's because we're Leos, you know, Leo gang hey, up Leo in the gang, house, gang, Leo gang, takeover. Gang. Uh, no, but my friend Monica used to do this too. She taught me how to like really get your point across without ever having to say <laughs> yes, anything, you know, favorite. with your face, your body language, <laughs> your tone of voice, just the way you yeah. can make some somebody like just yeah. feel like realize how stupid how they're stupid being, they but yeah. they, they can't say nothing because you're doing it. You know, it's just on um, like writing on that like. Okay, that one so, point. <laughs> no, you're right. So she comes up holding the basket. And in my head, I'm like, she's already, I know what she's going to do. So she hands it to me and she's like, oh, um, the fries are cold. Can I get them? Can I get hot fries? And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'll fix that right away. But that's just what happens when you call in your food ahead. Yeah. And she looked at me, she's like, I'm sorry. And like turned around and sat back down. <laughs> totally. I mean, I fixed it I, for I, her, I, but I was kind of just like. Yeah. That really is like the crucible of learning how to like throw shade, you know? Oh, right. I'm and the master to, of like, throwing shade. Because you can't say, fuck you. Right. You know? Right. It's like, it's like a very valuable life skill. But you know? these it's are. Like <laughs> what, yeah. I'm not trying to. to... With complete assholes yeah. Yeah, and, and make them feel shit. Without. Like, I'm definitely not trying to be presumptuous, but, like, these people, it's pretty, it's kind of easy to see that, like, these are the people that went to school, studied really hard, you know, like, got good grades, and they went straight into whatever career that they had chosen when they were, like, 11 years old, Mm -hmm. and never once worked in a restaurant, like, or any sort of, like, service industry. So, though they may be intelligent or whatever, they lack complete common sense. I, like literally. when it comes to that very thing, like complete common it sense. It comes down to. I feel to... like you might be giving them maybe a little bit too much credit, you know? <laughs> because typically somebody who has who lacks like the basic empathy that it takes to understand how difficult right. the job is or, or or the toughness of it, and just somebody who would default to assuming that you are stupid because you couldn't figure out how to get the fries there hot when she called like yeah. somebody with that level of dissonance is probably a you know a privileged fucking dick yeah. like they've probably been like that the whole time and i don't know if it's like just because they don't i think there is uh enough in their personality that's already there right and mm-hmm. that is pretty common with somebody who has never had to work in the service industry yeah. before right like I, I think it's safe to assume like eh, you're you're probably kind of an asshole. I don't think anybody <laughs> just doesn't know that yeah. it's difficult to like do this sometimes. Oh, I don't know, man. I think that like especially at our restaurant, and I don't think we're not going to go in to say exactly what it is. Yeah. I think that they're and you know, 
I'm not even gonna go into stereotypes like really like completely. I'm just saying right. I'm I'm just breaking it down to like the people that either know or they mm. don't know. And you know these people like just really just don't get it. And <laughs> and, and it's just oh I, I don't I don't understand my life. Yeah, and <laughs> you know you're just like fuck, dude. Like uh, what what can I say right now or or do to like you know make you understand without making you feel stupid because you're being fucking stupid. You're like, being an okay, idiot. Okay, so our food comes out like piping freaking hot, as you know. It does. When people tell me that their food came out like freezing cold, I want to like slap the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Our, the way that we cook our food, it boils within 30 seconds. Like water boils within 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. And so when you assume that your food's coming out of these hot ass, you know, kettles, uh-huh. And you, I get, I place it on your table, and then you have the audacity to tell me that your food's cold. Right. Oh my god. So one of the things I wonder, um, I don't know if you've ever checked them. I hate Yelp, but like I am kind of curious. I do check. Is to see like I'm mad if that people I do. Yelp about like their DoorDash shit or Postmates or whatever they the do. fuck it is. And so like, how many times do they complain about their food being cold on that? Because then Not that would be often. fucking retarded. Most of the time, they complain on how long it took or. They didn't get bread. <laughs> so <laughs> this is, is the... Which is free, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. But the culture that we live in, like, we... Okay, so, like, we are too lazy, in a sense, to go get fast food, which was designed <laughs> and created for us to fucking... Yeah. Like, that's oh. already, like, made us super lazy. Like, you go through a drive through you get your food, you bring it home, and you eat it, like, within yeah. 20 minutes at most, or right? you're eating it while you're driving. You know, mm-hmm. something that should take you forever. Like, if yeah. you're, you know, cooking, like, a, like a, a human being should, you know, cook and sit down and eat your food with somebody else. We, we already got past that stage of laziness. Yeah. We are now willing to pay, like, like 13 wait. extra dollars. It takes pants? Mm, yeah, no. exactly. It, We're no. willing to pay 13 extra dollars to have something take, like, literally three times as long to get here yeah. and cold and then want to go on Yelp and complain about it. <laughs> like, this is fucking stupid. So when I'm, it's like, crazy. randomly going through Yelp looking for, like, a restaurant just to go eat at in the neighborhood. And then you see like McDonald's pop up. And I'm like, <laughs> Who the fuck is writing a Yelp review about McDonald's? And then like the, the damn question. McDonald's on Tustin fucking Avenue has two and a half stars. Like, what the fuck do you expect? Oh my god, I had never even thought to like go look at McDonald's Yelp reviews, like or any fast food chain because. It's- you gotta be a goddamn maniac to be like, wait a minute, what is this Wendy's? They thing? have yeah, Yelp, they have right? Yelp reviews yeah, for craters, like for like hiking spots, bro. Dude, this they is weird. Really they do. do. They like, do. like this hike was okay. They Mother do. Nature kind of fucked up right, on this one. Right? <laughs> like, she didn't really deliver exactly. the way she did with fucking right. you know Yosemite. It's okay, <laughs> but like, will not return. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could give the National Park would you recommend zero to your stars, friends? I would. The fucking park by your house will God. not return. Okay, so every eat. McDonald's within like a four mile radius uh, is hovering around a two star rating. <laughs> this is incredible. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to pipe it. You guys keep going. I'm going to pipe in because this. there's no way this is not going to be... Dude, I'm telling you, people write reviews about McDonald's, about Taco Bell, about Del Taco. What do they say about Taco Bell? Okay, to be honest, I low key wanted to write one about Taco Bell. <laughs> about okay, so but but I mean, I didn't because it was just ridiculous. Like, come on, it's fast food. So <laughs> I was I pregnant. Like... I was fucking like eight months pregnant, and they came out with the nacho fries, and I'm pregnant, and all I want is the goddamn nacho fries. Mm-hmm. Right? And then they took them away. No, no. So I. <laughs> my fiance drives through the drive through and we're trying to order and nobody's answering and like I looked it up on Yelp <laughs> like they closed at like midnight I sh- we showed up at like 1030 and nobody answered the little speaker so we drive up to the window and I swear we see fucking employees like ducking and hiding from us I was so mad oh that would, oh, pit- that would infuriate that. me like too that. I'm like, I see you. Like, yeah. I see you. Just give me some goddamn fries. I put oh, on fucking shit. pants. I know, right? Okay, I came over I'm here. Fucking I fucking pregnant. appreciate how hard we work to get to the fast food place now. <laughs> Don't they know we could have just fucking opened the app and said for them to come to us? That is right. bullshit, man. 
Sheesh. So, it's also what now? Like, I just realized the people who write pub. super positive reviews for McDonald's are probably <laughs> crazier than the ones who write the negative ones. Right? This one's just like, the McRib is back, my son's new favorite, and the McNuggets are good as usual. I like this location. Like, like <laughs> what? Why? Right? Why would you even take the clearly 15 seconds that it took out of her day to sit and write that? Like, and there wasn't even a, like, there wasn't even to an outlet. Tell outlet's. your neighborhood. That, oh my goodness, these people should hear about this place, fucking McDonald's. They have no idea, man. There wasn't even like an ounce of fucking sarcasm in that whatsoever either. That was like a purely, like, I purely enjoyed this great food. (laughs) This is, I recommend, I will be back. Oh, these, some of these have got to be bots. This person's name is Fast Food P. I'm pretty sure that's not right. And your face is not a cheeseburger with an American flag sticking out of it, sir. But you left a five-star updated review. On McDonald's. What? Updated. That means you, you already wrote You one went before. back and changed it again. To I ordered the triple cheeseburger and apple pie for three ninety nine. The beef was good and the cheese was overflowing. That is a weird adjective and I'm not sure that's positive. <laughs> Doesn't like Yelp. A patriotic meal from this do. drive-thru. Okay. This person should be put on some kind of terrorist watch list. <laughs> that's like a Russian. They're this fucking is, Russians trying to get us diabetes. So that we can't vote. So that we, that that's because we're going. too lazy to go. Because we're too. I mean, they already got us on that. I, it probably was their damn fault why we're too lazy. They invented Postmates and shit. I'm convinced of it. They fucking Dude, created DoorDash. Right? Bro. They fucking did, bro. The Russians are fucking us over. And then like oh my DoorDash God. and Postmates, they add like like a five dollar charge for them to come like deliver it to you. That's what I'm door. saying. So then you feel like an even more piece of shit. Like I'm gonna spend like eight more dollars for them to bring it to me. Right. Rather than getting in my car and just going to go get it myself. I like I'm... Kim L from five months ago. Order Uber Eats, got our food. My Big Mac. Period. That's the whole sentence. <laughs> How can I eat this bread, cheese, lettuce, Mac sauce? It's a sonnet. That is the entire Yeah, is it <laughs> Is this a cry for help? No. Like, what is happening? Nick Jason One constructs star. more better. Nick Jason constructs better fucking. You oh know, my god. Better messages than that. I. This is just one way to really drive the point home that there is no hope for any of us getting anything done ever because apparently half the fucking country is illiterate. I can't. I mean, read Taco Bell was voted shit. the number one Mexican restaurant just in the country. Saying, I'm, I'm just, just saying. saying. Like, I'm all for Taco Bell. But that does say something right there. If the fucking country as a whole voted for Taco Bell as the number one fast food or the number one Mexican food restaurant. Dude, people go where Taco Bell closes down and gets taken out of the freaking city to do a candlelit vigil, do a candlelit vigil for the damn Taco Bell. What? They're doing yes. candlelit vigils for Taco Bell. Google it. I would be no. there. I'm not There's saying that I wouldn't two- be there. Taco Bell locations where customers came and did a candlelit vigil because that Taco Bell closed. There's just something about Taco Bell that is just, you know, I I, I don't know what it is because I'm one of those people. But like, I seriously can't go to a stand up comedy uh, open mic and not hear at least one bit that goes into Taco Bell from somebody like everybody's always going into Taco Bell. There's like something about this. Like Taco Bell is just it, it. It's a relatable cultural experience, and you know, like the heartbroken locals hold candlelit <laughs> vigil for Taco Bell that burned down. I told you. And subheader: It's Nacho Ordinary Vigil. Oh my god! You know what? I can't. Bravo, David Moy of HuffPost. Bravo. <laughs> Was that you? No. Are you going undercover? Changing David, your last name? I'm so yeah, just changing the last name a little bit. Oh, he just he just my, took the two my, letters off the end. I yeah. swear though, I could be. <laughs> The official spokesperson for Taco Bell. Like, I think I've already been effective on the West Coast, at least the regional. Right. And like, you do look like a little Mexican Chihuahua. So. Yeah, you know, <laughs> totally. I, if I get tagged in another fucking Taco Bell post, you know, I swear I'm going to, like, make all of them buy me a, like, fucking Chihuahua. Dude, you should just be sponsored. I should be. Straight up, as the day that I say I'm going to stop fucking eating bad food again. Because <laughs> get sponsored for what? Dude, fucking crunch traps <laughs> podcast. every day, bro. Yeah, I, Taco Bell every hey, time you Hey, yeah, record. you wanted to be sponsored by Hurricane. I want to be sponsored by Taco Bell. We have different needs, okay? Honestly, I, I would do it. If I just got, if I got a gordita <laughs> like per episode. Dude, that's hilarious. It's just great how it literally is something that is divided so equally down the middle. I have yet to find something else that is so divided down the middle. Like, they try to get in arguments about like burger joints and stuff. But, like, the burger joints that, like, for fast food, you know, because mm-hmm. obviously there are places that 
like you know restaurants that have amazing burgers but when you're comparing in and out to other places it's just funny the like selections that people actually try to compare to them like five guys like get the fuck out of here dude Get Five the f- guys ain't shit. Yeah, yeah, they're whack, bro. It's like thirteen dollars. Might as well go to fucking Red Robin, pay overpriced shit for like all of these choices. I like Red Robin. I like. Red I do like. That's what I'm saying. You might as well go to Red Robin. Yeah. And Red Robin's not great, but it's good enough, yeah. you know, for what it is. But In and Out is consistent. It's not that expensive, and it fucking always makes you feel good, no matter what. Like even if you're a vegan, mm, you're like debatable. Mm, I know that's very debatable. debatable. I didn't eat. I still eat In and Out seldomly, but I didn't eat it for a long time because yeah. when I was eating like super healthy and really good, oh, I swear to God, I smelled an In and Out, and I would just be out of commission for like good. a fucking you're day. Crazy. I, even when it's I was healthy, so heavy. There's even, so yeah, much fucking really, grease really in there, and it's not like anywhere close to good for you it's, you know i know it's nice that you can like see them make it there but yo that shit is so oh, fucking bad that's for crazy you. that's healthy for you no it's, it's <laughs> fucking fresh it's like you know made with fucking just fresh ingredients love. and yeah in love everybody gets it like i'm on like the the cool kids corner because i know about animal style fries and shit like that like Dude, the they, people they who made a facebook video if you don't things. know about yeah. animal style fries then fucking i don't like it it's, I mean, they're fries by themselves. It's like, they oh, hey, you want, you want some more mayonnaise with your fucking fried right? potatoes, you fat piece of shit? Here you go. <laughs> yeah, I actually do. I do want actually. that. Oh, actually. God. But when you're comparing it to like Five Guys, or the, the only other place I think maybe like The Habit would be good. Dude, there's I not that with many. The Habit. Habit's okay, great. The habit's they're like green the habit. bean fries. Habit's bomb, but there's not that many of them. So like when people yeah. just go around talking show in and out, you're like, shut up. Fuck you. You know, because yeah. if you got that way with In-N-Out, then you'd get that way with every other burger place then. Oh, I don't really get that way with any fucking fast food joint. Right. No, I'm talking about... I don't like have that much got, personal investment If you in got it. sick, like, if you got yeah. sick at the smell of it when you were eating healthy. Oh, uh, okay. Then okay. all the rest of them would only make you probably die. Yeah. Yeah, no, so I don't like... So, comparatively, it's fucking amazing. But... It's still not like a split straight down the middle the way Taco Bell. It's a pretty tacos. low bar you're setting, but I that is technically correct. Here mm-hmm. you go, back on the Taco <laughs> Bell. Don't talk Anyways, about. let's get back into the real restaurant business. You know, like why... what actually matters and just pisses me. Yeah, off. so like <laughs> obviously working in the restaurant business will give you that sort of you know uh, compassion for you know anybody who works hard at all. <laughs> you know, like because it's not as easy as people think, and the whole like mentality behind like especially the non-tipper people out there in the oh, world, the people yeah. that try to justify like not tipping at all. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, well, they should have went and got a better job. You know, it's like yeah. the same people that wear uh, New Balance and call <laughs> the cops on fucking people throwing barbecues out mm-hmm. in the park and shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they should have got a better job. It's not my fault. Yeah. I shouldn't have to pay for them. The restaurant should just do that. I mean, if we had set that up originally, like ahead of time, like sure. But your like insistence on, you know, fighting the power and changing the system like uh no you're just being a fucking dick and right kind of cheap everybody you know? needs to work because they don't understand like well they're getting paid out really it's like dude like we are getting taxed like a motherfucker i can't t- i like hourly i for sure pay to go to work like <laughs> i pay to go to work the only benefit of going to work is because of the fact that like you're making that quick cash right then and right. there you don't have to wait yeah. for like a check to come into yeah. your account you know so like that the taxation it fucks you over because like we have to tip out of the money that we're having to get yeah. taxed on yeah. and so you know yeah it says that we should make like you know 160 dollars but you got the busters you got the you kitchen you got the kitchen, these people that you got to do all this stuff for mm-hmm. and every restaurant's different but ours is very unique you know our restaurant's smaller and so like the busters do a lot more like fast-paced work i feel like than Those a lot of other dog. restaurants mm-hmm. and so you have to oh like you know kind of give them more than you would in other restaurants which yeah. i think in other restaurants depending on the restaurants they you know they do or they don't everything's kind of unique in that way but mm-hmm. ours they make good money but we're the ones getting taxed on that right as the servers you know mm-hmm. and so like when you do the math like and you go to tax you know pay your taxes and get your taxes back and you're in like, why am I fucking owing? You don't record yeah. like a thousand dollars. You don't record what you pay out. Though? I just started. What do you mean like that? How you mean rec- every single shift recorded? Yes. You're supposed yeah. to. Dude, I have a freaking. See, this is where I don't have no. No, no, this is why I'm show. doing it now. I'm doing it now this year. I just started it. every day that I'm working. I'm writing down how much I'm walking out with. And then how much I'm tipping out. But is yeah, that supposed like, to, like, how do they believe you on that? that? Like, uh, yeah. There's how, an app somebody uses. Like, I don't know. Bad but where's use. the legitimate, like, how, okay, so my question to you is, and I want to know, I, I, I've never really thought you could do this before, but how, what's to stop you from lying completely about that, you know, to where 
they're gonna like will they honor that that's like that's why you get a tax person that's not scared to go to prison <laughs> <laughs> straight up yo now i don't know exactly how it is done but like they they do you're supposed to like claim your own tips and i think uh, yeah. a certain like there's a certain percentage to it or something yeah like when we clock out at the end of every shift it gives you a percent the minimum and like yeah. to override that you have to have a manager do it but even then so, it's like you either claim nothing or that and so you don't want to do that because then what if you get started you start getting audited and shit well, well it's, when, it's when we do payroll and stuff at the end, it set, it shows how much. Yeah, all those numbers get reported. Are, are declaring, and then we just enter. Okay, so but that's my them. that's my point is like we're supposed to declare a minimum amount, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that's more than what we're walking with yeah. every time. So like, when we clock out, it would say like, okay, you have to declare one twenty, but you're walking out with like eighty. Right. Exactly. But that's because but of the tip out. Because you're tipping because, out buses, you're tipping but out the kitchen. are you not recording the tip out from there? Je I don't. Some people don't. I never I did do. because I, I didn't know you could. I didn't know that was a thing you could take to them and be like, yeah, like because then you know my question jumping forward would be like, no, but yeah, but my thing was like, I guess my assumption, which was probably false, yeah, it, uh, would be that like they would say, well, what do you, what is this? What do you mean? Like, what's to stop you from? Saying that you know you walk maybe with, take but, that extra step if you do record it and have the guys like ignition. But the yeah. POS system like is like that is recorded in there. Like right. if they wanted to audit you, they would audit that. No, I, I understand what you're saying, but like, I mean, yeah, anybody could lie. But like they, stuff. <laughs> that. But there's also credit card transactions, so they can follow the credit card transactions. Tips, you know? your cash tips, cash you don't always. Yes, right. You don't. Necessarily but that's not what I'm saying though, because like they they are keeping track based on your sales, you yeah. know, and not how much you tip out. So like the, my question is like, how are they gonna, what how are they gonna know exactly how much you tipped out to unless, your guys? Because we do kind of tip unless out. you when you do your checkout you print out two, and you keep one. You I mean, I mean, know how the checkout are, prints like, out all of that. Stuff. Yeah, but that still tells you only what you are supposed to claim. It doesn't say how much you tip to them. The system at my it, old it does. spot would how it's, ask the you like says, what you tipped out. But we tip kitchen. more to the busters than that. Write it down. <laughs> yeah, this is like, this, this <laughs> yeah. Jokes, man. I, 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 I get, but you do see, you, what yeah, see what I'm saying. Yeah, I see what you're it's saying. It's still yeah, like definitely. they could be like, well. How, you could have just changed that. You fucking liar. Yeah, I yeah. just don't know these things. If I could get away with it, I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going to fucking, because I deserve it. Like, yeah. I'm go, I, the last couple of years, because like the last three years, it was like 500 one year, and the last mm -hmm. two years have been over a thousand, and then I have to pay yeah. in taxes at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. That's fucking ridiculous. And I was working three jobs. Yeah. You know, it's like in this country, the more you work, the more at, you but the, like, you know, but the more you make, you don't have to make you like the yeah. more money you make for the less work. You don't have to mm -hmm. pay that much more money. Yeah, yeah like, that makes sense. Fucking backwards, like it that. totally makes you sense. Know? Yeah, like you know, oh, it's not fair. You know, no, it's, fuck that. You know, it's a fun fact is that we don't actually have to be like sending our sending them like what we made and all this stuff, all this tax forms and how mm -hmm. complicated everything is and why you need to have a fucking CPA and tax person. They have all that information already and already complete. They could actually send it to you uh, every year and say, hey, does this look right to you? And you say, yeah. And you just say, okay. Or you just ignore it and just assume they got it right. That yeah. is, they have the capability to do that 100%. I don't know if I the like only that though because they would probably try to fuck you. That's why they send you the thing. And if you don't like it, then you could, yeah. you could, you could test oh, it and say, oh, there was this, there was this going I on. I feel like there's too many people out there. And it's sad to say that like will not be able to fight for themselves on that issue though. Like, I feel like they wouldn't be able okay, to go. You realize everybody is getting fucked now. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't know how but to fight for themselves. But it's a reverse Case thing. in point, you've probably been claiming a lot more than you had to. Oh, than you thought you had to. Totally. Well, you know, I've gone to, I've gone to other, because uh, I usually use my, my mom's pretty good at it. She does it and still goes to a tax person. Like, so she'll do it on her own and then still go to like, get like a second opinion on it and yeah. shit. And, and, you know, she's done Well, they it have for a me. business and everything. So. Huh? Don't they have a business? Who? My Your mom. mom and no, yeah. my mom works. Uh, oh, my mom works corporate at Wells Fargo, so she understands finance and oh, she okay. understands like you know banking and mm -hmm. and and shit like that. And she's always trying to teach me, which it just like yeah, right, whatever. Ooh, she yeah, did not do a good job. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, no, well, she no, she did do her the best. I did the better job at just not giving a fuck. <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> that's what happened. Um, as it will with just about anything you try to tell me to do, because I'm a Leo stubborn ass motherfucker hey, over here, Leo gang. Yeah, for real. So anyway, uh, 
I didn't fucking know any of this shit. And she's, you know, like trying to help me, obviously. And we go to these other uh, the tax people and it's just like, well, yeah, you should next year, you know, make sure that you claim this and that. I'm like, huh? And, and like, yeah, my it. mom every time. You, know, you could pay attention and then like, you know, right? be better off. Right? <laughs> I mean, you a little just bit, but I would still, mom. I would still be <laughs> owing, even if it's not a thousand, it would still be like, you know, $500 or 300. Like, like most people come back and they say, yeah, I made like a couple thousand dollars off my tax return. I'm like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. How does that happen? I don't know if that's most people, but yeah. Not most people. Well, but I mean, if you, I'll take 30 fucking bucks back. Yeah. <laughs> Give me yeah. 30 fucking dollars. Okay. So keep your receipts and then take some notes, you know? I don't Get know. a little system in place. It all man. comes back around. I got $124 today in my as a bonus from my work meeting, my annual mm-hmm. work meeting. Uh, it was definitely the lowest end of the totem, though, compared to the $3,000 in cash that some of the other fucking dudes got handled. But I was still stoked. I was like, 124 bucks I did not have before today. Like I didn't even know about it. I didn't anticipate this at all. I was like, fuck it, yeah. I'm so gonna... that's why you got the fancy kettle one today. I, well, this is her. She's oh putting God. this. I'm going to go buy some... Right. I'm going to go buy some some hey. bullshit. <laughs> oh, hey. kettle, kettle. I should yeah. just be sponsored by Kettles. Well, if there's one takeaway, it's fuck like TurboTax and all them. They're the ones who like lobby to keep this shit super complicated and make sure that you have to go to them and that like you lose out on a bunch of money every year because of that. They really it's do. to make themselves necessary. And this is That's where the only I used reason. TurboTax once and that was like when I first started working. So I was, you know, inputting everything that was on my W2 and then I got like $300 back. The next year, I made about the same amount of money, but I actually took it to a tax person. I got like two G's back. So Hmm. I don't know what the hell TurboTax is doing, but it's not accurate. Well, I just know they're making it harder on all of us to keep themselves essential. I mean, same with the tax, same with your tax guy too. Like there's like CPA lobby Mm -hmm. groups that actually like, you know, uh, are actively working against simplifying the tax system Mm -hmm. and making it so that people like, you know, you don't need to have a fucking finance degree to understand all this it's shit. It's just technology, dude. Everything is is coming to where it's just taking away from us actually interacting with people. Right. Like, you have options where you don't even have to go get your food again. You have DoorDash, you have Postmates, you have all that stuff. Everything is is compatible with your damn phone. That's, yeah. That's true. Like, I don't like... I see it in myself sometimes where, like, you actually have to call to do something. And I'm like... I don't want to call to do it. Just text me. Send me an email. Let me do it for my phone. Right. And then you just like, well, now all of my, you know, people skills gone down the drain. But then, of course, I go back into serving and then get pissed off again and just want to do it for my phone. It's, <laughs> Send, it's Text me your order. I got you. Text me your order. I got it. It's all forcing us into this like weird new thing where where when you didn't have to think about mm-hmm. practicing social skills and talking to people right. as like a almost like a muscle that you need to work out. You know, yeah. there's never been a time in history where we could really just like let that atrophy, mm-hmm. you know, and even before when there was you're like, oh, it's that crazy mountain Willie who like lives <laughs> up there by himself. And then he comes back into town to like shit in a fucking trash can and run back into the woods. Like, no, those are the crazy people, you know? And now when we've Basically. like, we've got this world where people can live, we can live amongst each other without talking to each other like that. Yeah. And we're realizing, oh, that is something that isn't just inherent that you actually do have to work on that. And so now it's, again, it's like when we used to have to hunt for food, now we're just like, oh man, we have to put on pants to get in our car to go to the right. drive through and realize like, oh shit, okay, no, we actually have to do, we actually have to be thoughtful yeah. and like work towards talking with each other and shit like that it's it's half the reason that i fucking forced myself to like it's like we force ourselves to do this every week you know yeah yeah it's do like something. we need we need to have this because it's right. super easy to just, oh like, my gosh i was lazy. just talking about it uh, because then you're stuck in traffic and then you know listening to music it kind of is just like repetitive and you know it kind of just i've noticed that like just listening to like the same songs over and over again I'm yeah just, i'm not even listening anymore right to the point so i started listening to podcasts from like driving i'm like haha yeah you know it's and a different form of stimulation exactly so i mean what you guys are doing is exactly awesome. the same way it was for me driving down every, all the time and you're right like the music just it was more aggravating than anything like you run out of music to like inspire you to make yeah. you feel good and so here you go you just got this like you know thing where you can find this shit on these long drives that you might yeah. not even be completely paying attention yeah. to but you'll find that you actually are paying attention to them and yeah. it makes the time go by so much faster and then it's just like wait this is 
you can do this anybody could do this Mm -hmm. like why are we not doing this like we can fucking do this you know it's like the last as i've said before many times on here it is really just like the last form of like free form un you know uncensored just whatever the fuck you want like you know media out there that Mm -hmm. you could just put out there i mean i guess you could do like video and whatever but like yeah, like let's go ahead and get right into this, you know, now kind of giving the history because we're talking about the restaurant industry. We're talking about how, you know, most people like kind of should get into it or at least like a lot of people that we know have been in it. How did you come to have your first job in the service industry? Um, when I graduated high school. So before I graduated, I started applying places like, you know, I need to work, blah, blah, blah. So I started working at Adventure City. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you've been all over because you're like all over the place. That's on, over there in my, my other hood. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was working at Adventure City and I was a server in the party station. Dude. Dude. So whoa. I was turning up with these like three-year-olds. Oh, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> like, I used to get down. Drinking Mountain Dew and shit. Yeah. That's dude, like we got like the high C fruit punch. High C. Oh, and some pizza. Dude. So Fuck a Capri Sound up, so yeah. I'm trying to. Mm-hmm. Fuck oh, yeah. Yep. So, so that's where I started, to be completely honest. Um, and then I got into uh, retail, and I absolutely fucking hated it. Where did you work in retail? Retail, I worked at Big Five, and then I worked at Disneyland. Oh. Man, retail so is I all the fun of restaurants. So in, the in retail, what were like some of the, if, off the top of your head, the most ridiculous things that have happened to you in those, in like, you Trying know, to return some shit without a receipt. Like, just. That and, and honestly, working at Disneyland was just fucking horrible. Wait, what did you do at Disneyland? Dude, I worked in retail. I worked, I worked on, um, I worked in the Emporium on Main Street. Oh, that's I got fired because I got in a fight. So I got fired from there too. Oh, After man. three months. <laughs> Where did you I work? worked in food. I worked in foods though. Hold on, you shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. What happened with this? I need to hear this story. Mm-hmm. All right, so so I I show up to work. I'm just mad. I'm not in a good mood. I just got my wisdom teeth taken out. <laughs> okay. All right. So <laughs> I'm fucking pissed. They didn't give me my day off, right? So. I get off, I, I go in, you know, you have to take a, a shuttle to Disneyland and it's like a 20 minute shuttle. <laughs> oh right? yeah, I know all about First it. First of all, the parking <laughs> is fucking shit. So uh-huh. you got to walk over there, sit there, wait for a shuttle and then get your ass there. Wait, so do you have to be a half hour early to work? Like yeah. Basically, you know, basically. An hour early. You got to plan to go there. Yeah. Yeah. And if you, if you, if you, if you work far, you have to walk. I worked in the very back, so you had to walk all the way around and that's where you clock in. They give you a five minute, like... Grace period. Grace period on when you clock in. I feel like you be you better give me one of those goddamn electric scooters <laughs> or some shit. Like so, when you clock out, if your scheduled clock out time is twelve or two forty five, you got to leave fifteen minutes before that. So yeah, by the time so you, you walk. got by the time you got to your car, it was two forty five, and you're able to go home. Oh, right. how nice of them. Yeah. Right. right? But because only because of the fact that you got to show up. Dana, did you real quick before we get back to yeah. your, you telling the story? Did you show up already in your uniform, or did you change in the casting station? I would show up already in my uniform. Okay. So, which was also bad. They didn't like you walking around anywhere else. Outside anywhere of else yeah. in your damn you know, uh, costume. You'd have to go straight there so you couldn't fuck yeah. around. So I get there, clock in. I'm already pissed off. I'm going around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going. I was like 18, mm-hmm. walking around mad because my fucking mouth hurt, and I'm on Vicodin. I also smoked a bowl before I got there. So I'm just like all types of feeling some type of way. Uh-huh. Right. So then somebody comes up to me and she's just like, I'm not, I'm not, like, I swear to God, she was on crack. And she's like, I'm not having a good fucking time here. And I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> but like in my head, I'm like, and neither am I because I'm fucking here. Homegirl swings at me. What? <laughs> I'm fucking mad. I swing back. Is she a worker or no? Uh, just a just, random yeah, lady swung on I'm you. Telling you up and says, I'm telling you, I'm not having a good time here. I'm not having a good time here. And just starts swing. swinging. <laughs> and I'm like, that's why I said she was on crack. She was on some type of shit because oh I mean goodness. I've gone to Disneyland multiple times under the influence anyway, so whatever. Yeah. But so I was just like. Oh. And they didn't have any camera to show this sort of thing no, whatsoever to for your I'm case. Pretty sure they. It was like in the Emporium. There was like a little corner, kept corner where. There wasn't much going on there. Right, so right. it was like around that area, like right where I would walk out, where employees like walk out happened Damn. right there. That is some that is some luck right there. Like and the I'm one mad. spot in the camera. You think you she, she's hit like me. Mickey or some you shit hit me, to, like, I'm gonna hit you back. I don't give a fuck. She's a fucking Samoan and Mexican over here. She's not like like I wouldn't <laughs> I'm like think to get, of yeah, hothead. Like yeah. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and like, a Leo you, too. <laughs> you swing on me, I'm gonna swing back. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
You swung on me, I swung back, boom, got fired. All right, so. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, How long did you work you? there, though? Why, oh. why did she choose you out of all the fucking people that's just, in the park? Like, that's an unfortunate know. fucking circumstance. Like, what the villains? Like, leave me the fuck alone. Like, leave me alone. But nothing happened, there, to her? happened to her? No. What? This is crazy. I don't know. Anyways, this is crazy. Anyways, I got fired. So after working at Disneyland, I worked for... <laughs> Wait, how long? Real quick. How long did you work there, though? I worked Wait. at Disneyland for maybe, I want to say, like, four months. So and it felt like months. forever, right? It felt Dude, like forever. Open straight. season on cast members. I feel like we need to test this theory. Like, can I, I just go and dude, just, like, kick blue? I was three dude. months. It felt like three years, bro. I'm telling you. Everyone that I've met that has worked at Disneyland fucking hated it. There's yeah. two types of people. People who work at Disneyland and leave or get fired or people who work there and are crazy as fuck. Yeah. Because they're just like, they're that type of person that yeah. they're like, they're made for Disneyland. They're like, hee hee hee. Like they're always yeah. perky and <laughs> shit. They're always like Okay, fucking... so have you ever gone? Okay, so when you go, like you notice this. So Disneyland does this thing where they're, um, they're a union, obviously. So the longer you've been there, the better shifts you get. So if you go during the day, you're going to notice a bunch of old ass people working. Obviously, because mm-hmm. they've been there 40 fucking miserable years mm-hmm. and they're there. So when you see the shift change, it's when the sun starts going down and you, now you start to see all the college kids yeah. and the younger adults. And I swear to God, it's the funniest thing ever because the last time I went, we were in line for like Dole Whip. You know, that's a long ass line. And the park was about to close, like maybe like 15 minutes before the park closed. So obviously everybody's pissed off, just like in the restaurant industry. Never go into a restaurant 15 minutes before they're about to close. Fuck that. You're about to get the shittiest service <laughs> of your life. But I'm like, oh, it's Disneyland. Fuck it. You know, like they should, you know, it's Disneyland. So I get there. I get up front. I pay for my, my goddamn Dole Whip. <laughs> and... <laughs> The, the cast member handing out the Dole Whips starts yelling at a guest that had paid and like walked away. But she had the worst damn attitude. She's like, excuse me, excuse me, you forgot your damn change. I'm like, oh shit. What? Whoa, oh my who God. gets mad about that? Disneyland people, I'm telling you, don't shit. ever work there. That's crazy. I've never right. experienced that. That's like some Knott's Berry no, Farm shit. Get like- <laughs> <laughs> some Six Flags Knott's Berry Farm. Dude, I was like walking by Knott's Berry Farm. I'm like, how do they even employ these people? They were like kids. Like, First of all, they're at those like carnival games, like the basket we, yeah. you know, on a Tuesday afternoon when nobody is playing that fucking it's, game. It's basically like a stationary <laughs> year round carnival of like like one of those traveling ones with like the like the creepy so like oh it's what you go to but like you're just like is an employee here like what like what it's yeah. definitely like if you what look you're on saying. like the Megas oh list map there's God. just one giant red dot over Knott's Berry Farm. I just remembered to okay so everyone who who's ever worked at Disneyland now works at fucking Knott's Berry Farm. <laughs> that's not I true because I don't work at Knott's Berry Farm. I don't work there. I swear Two people that I know two people. that I worked with at Disneyland Everyone. works at fucking Knott's Berry Farm now. That sounds like two people, <laughs> but that is a lot of people. <laughs> Send me all the resumes, Knott's Berry Farm. You guys all worked at Disneyland. So after, <laughs> so after I worked at... Or they didn't get hired or got fired. Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. So after I worked at Disneyland... I um, was working for the Huntington Beach Union High School District Mm -hmm. in the special ed department. Okay. Oh, that's cool. So I have really good patients, okay, just based off of that. So it was mild mod special ed, so the kids that, like, just couldn't pay attention for the dear life of them Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I would go, I'd be, like, the teacher aide Mm -hmm. and, you know, grade papers, help the kids understand basic math problems. Um, So I did that for two years. Until I realized, like, whoa, math is changing. I can't, I can't comprehend any of this anymore. <laughs> well, so they they were upping it on yeah, them though, too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was just if like, you couldn't understand it. That's then. what I'm saying. That's why I was like, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> but so you were fo- you were like following the classroom. It's just like the curriculum, the curriculum yeah, for the cur- that grade level yeah, was just getting harder and harder. All started changing. Oh. So I'm like, and then the different way of like just doing math just changed and i was like although i will say that most of the people i know in like special education classes not maybe not most i don't know that many but 
they're way smarter in math than I am. <laughs> like they're just better at that kind of shit. Like, you know, they, they, they lack other skills and other things, yeah. but like when it comes to that shit, like oh. my brother, my brother, you know, was always like the guy that we would just like ask to fix any electronic like thing that was wrong in the house. Like, you know, mm-hmm. a sort mm-hmm. of like savant sort of thing. Like, yeah. you know, like whatever we're lacking, it's because their brain is, or whatever we think they're lacking. It's just because their brain is like, yeah. Phew, Oh, yeah, oftentimes, you know, in basically all forms of like autism, it's some level of like, you know, stunting the growth and like the, the socialization, you know, their ability to like read that stuff, you know. And they have yeah. some sort of genius in some other way, you yeah. know, whether it's art or like, you know. Yeah, because a some... lot of the kids that I worked with, they they drew everything like just perfect, you know, they're very artistic in any type of way, but they just couldn't get the normal long yeah. division down and stuff like that so right. that's where i came in i was helping him out and stuff like that i still um, don't know that shit same yeah <laughs> but anyway so then you did that i did and that then... and then summertime was coming around i was like yo i need to find another job so lo and behold i went on craigslist and i found our wonderful glorious restaurant that wow. we work for now <laughs> and, and that's and... that's the only restaurant you worked for yeah Oh, besides okay. Adventure City and working like right, so serving you, that way, but and I Disneyland mean, obviously is very similar in that way. Yeah, even, even gnarlier. Like if you yeah. work at Disneyland, then you definitely know, like you know what it's like to fucking whether you're in foods or yeah. you're, you're in attractions or anything. Like their you know training what it's like. was just intense. You know, it was. Like, and then that's when you realize that they own the world. Dude, they really do. They like like it was when I fucking saw the videotape like uh, during our orientation at Disneyland. That mm-hmm. was like you. They fucking own the world. <laughs> like they own everything. In a like sense, six companies that owns. In a the sense, world. I kind of, like my daughter kind of owns Disney. But it's so crazy how it is Disney. Like it's literally yeah. like a thing that was meant to be like fun, you know. And it, it was in. It's here. It's Garden Grove. Yeah. Like you know, like that's where he has like that's what Garden. The only like really significant thing about Garden Grove, other than than the Sublime song, is that like <laughs> fucking Walt Disney had like a uh, you know garage there that mm-hmm. he would do like the I guess originals like Steamboat Willie cartoons out of and shit, and that was it, you know. And so, uh, like it's it's crazy that like that turned into this fucking conglomerate ESPN, fucking thing that's just like ABC, everything that everything. we know and they can win and get away with every fucking thing well you know? i mean like disney itself is responsible for like so much of what is kind of hindering a lot of progress in this country because of their like they they have defined copyright law in this country mm-hmm. basically because you know the it, by the old standards of copyright law like steamboat willie like back in 28 or something like that's still owned by by Disney, but yeah. normally it should be most things would be done in like 30, 30 years. 50 years Wait, something. isn't it like a hundred guys... years so, after they die though? Or... But, but that's because uh, Disney keeps lobbying them. So every time it gets up to a point where something like Mickey Mouse would fall under public domain, uh-huh. like Mickey Mouse is like as iconic as like uh, Happy Birthday and mm-hmm. like uh, you right. Know, Rudolph the red nosed Reindeer, like a like Jesus, an old fable. Too. Yeah, Jesus. Jesus. It really, no, it really is. All like Mickey, everybody knows made. Mickey Mouse, man. Yeah. You fucking go anywhere in the world and not know Mickey Mouse. And so yeah. that's and that's all fine. Like they can they can keep having Mickey Mouse if they're still doing stuff with it. I don't have a problem with that necessarily, but like that actually affects everything. Yeah. The copyright law. So basically, nothing falls into the public domain anymore, which means it actually stunts like creativity and growth. And right. I, I've. By some extent, and now I don't remember all of this quite, but there is some connection to like a uh, patent law too that yeah. I have heard that like kind of stunts that because they 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 do subtly affect each other. But God damn it, I don't have that like sure exact connection off the top of my head. But like yeah, you can kind of tie a pretty direct line from Mickey Mouse and Walt Disney being the reason why we ha- we don't have nearly as much like innovation, you know, especially from you know the creative standpoint as we you know mm-hmm. as we could. It's crazy, though, because it is one of those things that we can all agree in in many ways that, like, fuck, like, there's a lot of things wrong with the way that it's going and the way that it's running and shit, but we all go there. (laughs) We all fucking go. We still watch the fucking movies. We still support it. We still do all this shit because it it does, you know, it is like, uh, because, I mean, my life was changed by that shit. You know, we grew up watching that shit and it, like, inspired us and, you know, it really shaped the way that we are. And there's a lot of good that has come from it, but there's also, like this stuff that's not so good. I mean, that's, that's, that's not worth like boycotting them over or something like no, that. No, yeah. that, that's I mean, why I said not, not so important. good. I'm although, not saying bad. Although, like, did you guys... Yeah. Okay, so, not so, so I read something <laughs> where Disneyland tried to own the, the copyrights or trademarks of Day of the Dead because of their movie Coco. 
What? Yes, but they decided not to because I mean they don't have a case for that. You don't. You don't. You're taking it from the Mexican Hispanic culture. But they but have they a tried. lawyer that can probably they, they have lawyers. Yes. That can like, do they have a case? Actually, like any of their stuff is it's pretty much all public domain shit. Like they, right. they make all the movies yeah. from. And so are they able it to? Was, okay, well, because if you go to like Disneyland now, now, if you go to Disneyland now, there's probably about two areas within. Disneyland and California Adventure that's dedicated to Day of the Dead. So Did you have, like, like Coco? I loved Coco. I, I loved thought Coco, Coco was cute. I thought it was Although I didn't think it was better than uh, Moana. Book of Life. Oh. Have you ever seen Book of Life? No. Book of Life. So no. Book of Life, I feel, is a better. I like Moana better. Is better than But Coco. so Coco, and I'm not one at I all. I thought so Moana, though. I, 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 am, also uh, I am definitely not one to be, like, I'm usually the one to, like, like when people are like, oh, this is racist or this is, you know, this is mm-hmm. like, like just totally culturally insensitive. And I'm just like, dude, it's a fucking cartoon or whatever. And it's not that I think that way about Coco, but there was something about it. Like when I was listening to him, I'm like, this is just cheesy. The accents, like it just really threw me off. Like, and it made me feel like, wow, I am an asshole in the ways. Cause I thought <laughs> when if somebody were to say that about yeah. like another, like, you know, culture or something, I'm like, ah, it's just a cartoon. It's, Leave yeah. it alone. But like when at this, I'm like, it's not that it's, I don't think it's racist. I just think it's tacky. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I thought that like the overemphasis on like, you know, the, the language and stuff and like, like the well the the it's obviously english but with the mm. accents and stuff i was just like well i don't i just it turned me you off to understand that a little bit you know yeah, yeah. It, it made me understand it and it just turned me off it was like this is not like it's just kind of uh, I, not bad i don't want to like demonize it mm. and make it's, it seem it, like it's it like, it like oh fuck them it's just though. it's yeah. just not it's, yeah tacky would be the only that. word that comes to mind i get it i like yeah i liked it that part didn't bother me you know it's yeah just, you know, a lot of it does come from. I, I I don't see a lot of these things that come out anymore as like, because like in the past you could tell that it was like a a, a movie about. Uh, it's like oh, a movie about uh, you know any ethnic group. Right. You know, but it's clearly written by like a group of white guys. Right. <laughs> right totally. And like, that's what like, like, almost our entire history. And I, like, that's what we see it that way. Yeah. Now everything. it's like, okay, no, I can actually trust that these people yeah. are, are are getting it right. These rooms actually are not are filled with people who are they are all representing it. It is our own people telling our own story. Mm-hmm. Now, you know. Obviously there's a group of white guys, you know, somewhere around smattered about it, but you know, it, it, that shit doesn't uh doesn't bug me as much though. As right. right. And there's there's pure examples of like how you love certain things that you grew up on and then you get to a point where you're like realize like, well shit, it's really hard to deny that this is fucking like just you know, like you understand the time and place that it was created and you can respect that. But yeah. like moving forward, like like Pocahontas is one of those movies. Oh my god. And that was also directed by a guy I know that like that I've met and he's like the coolest guy in the world. And I know I know this guy would not be like intentionally racist whatsoever at all. Yeah. But you just watch a movie like that and you're just like there's just like what the fuck, dude? Dude, okay, <laughs> it's so it's crazy. So it's my pretty crazy. <laughs> daughter my daughter is in love with Shrek. Okay, so we started I started watching Shrek now as a 25 year old Mm -hmm. and shrek is fucked up shrek is a fucked up movie have you guys it's fucked up yeah have you ever noticed okay okay as a child you're just like this is an awesome movie by the way shrek was way before its time anyways i don't watch it just because of this somebody was dude that's (laughs) literally like two minutes that's like the opening so anyways you see lord farquaad trying to get rid of all the damn fairy tale creatures in the world Mm. because he thinks that they're corrupting his world his perfect world he yeah. says but if you see they have every every little story that you've ever been told as a child in that movie so they have like the three bears right yeah. right so the beginning of the movie it's everybody in the kingdom selling their fairy tale creatures you know just to get rid of them so there's the three bears you got papa bear mama bear baby bear baby bear's crying because his his cage is too small and then you you move forward to where they're all dumped in Shrek's swamp, right? So then you see Papa Bear and Baby Bear, but you don't see Mama Bear. Then you go later down into the movie and you see Mama Bear like killed, skinned into a rug on Lord Farquaad's fucking bedroom floor. Whoa. So would it have been different if it was the Baby Bear up. or the Papa Bear? No, I'm just saying it's just 
fucked up. There's, Shrek is I'm fucked so, up. So, oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. No, I yeah. thought you were gonna say Shrek was like problematic. I'm like, no, Whoa. I just think it's just sad. Seeing no, it's sad, like, sad in that yeah. way. Yeah, like yeah, yeah that, But you don't notice. But I'm what I'm saying is you don't notice those things as a child when you're watching these movies. Well, that's that's part of the no. I think of a lot of them that they've done. Yeah. I've actually been having haven't. I feel like I've been having this conversation like four times for the last couple of days because uh, me and my girlfriend, we, I mean, we love the show uh, The Amazing World of Gumball. Oh, I and love that show. And it's, it's so good yeah. to everybody. And then we were, we were asked, they were like, when did that start where they were like really putting in a lot of subtle stuff? And I'd say, SpongeBob. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of Looney Tunes you can I, back I don't on, think it like, was subtle. I Looney Tunes. I don't that even think that that was like, subtle based on what you're saying. I think that that's something that was like more, like it just shows how much we've changed as, as a society because yeah. like even in today, like where, like, especially in California, it's like people here do not understand hunting culture at all, like, or anything of that nature. So like, of you know, like, you know, back in the day man. and I hate to, back in the day, cause like relatively like we're talking about fast food and junk food and all stuff. Mm -hmm. That shit didn't start existing until like, you know, the fifties, you know, or like whenever McDonald's fucking started to come around and then it obviously got worse and worse and worse, mm -hmm. but it was never really a thing. And there were times where even back then, and as soon as back then, like people were hunting for food and they were actually like, you know, doing these things for that. Like we're so far beyond that. We don't need that anymore that we're just like, oh, that's fucking dumb. Yeah. That's terrible. So, um, you know, it, it, it's just one of those things where the normalcy, like in, in mm -hmm. satire, like Looney Tunes is a great example. You can go back and watch it and it's like people are like, oh, this is racist, problematic or intentional. Like this was literally like just like the family guy or Simpsons of the time. Like it's like <laughs> yeah. you can't blame like the creators of this for like making fun of what was happening in our mm -hmm. world at that time. You know, yeah, yeah naturally yeah, yeah, yeah. moving forward, you're not going to go and like, you know, say that like that this is re like of our time but that was what was going on back then mm -hmm. well, yeah and, and to uh and I, I think that's the the grades uh the, the it was like a looney tunes read master whatever like that or they they refused to censor anything about the old looney tunes because they said to do that would be to try to like whitewash history and pretend right. like these things yeah. never happened right i think it is important to kind of see the historical context Absolutely. Like, you can learn a lot from seeing how this well, stuff how much we grew too. And yeah, exactly. It's it's a it's like a it's like a touchdown. It's a measurement of growth. You can kind of see how we've evolved as a society from there to where there was like a like I remember one of the most racist fucking things I've ever seen was a Walt Disney comic strip that he drew of Mickey Mouse like getting like this uh this like African like uh you know bushman like mm -hmm. you know in a crepe or something like that delivered to him and then like he was just like fucking the house up and they're like oh it's like it's so. It's the most patronizing fucking racist thing I've ever heard. That's yeah. like not that seemed like it was trying to like the message was trying to be there, but like they don't even understand how shitty it was. And that's from like Walt Disney. Well, like, but do you feel about... like it's okay to keep things like that? Like, as, oh no, no, no like... absolutely not. Yeah. Do not keep. And this, like yeah, yeah, yeah. this no, it's is just, it's just not um, you know not uh, uh, washing away yeah. kind of what that was. This like, may be a little bit extra too, but like. I'm going to go ahead and tie this back into the overall theme of this podcast right now, which is the restaurant business that we work in yeah. and like what we're seeing in media and movies and, you know, like pop culture, everything, all of the trends and how things are changing drastically. Like it does the same thing in the restaurant business, because if you work in the restaurant business or have ever worked in the restaurant business, you will, if you were being completely honest, mm -hmm. you will say that stereotypes exist oh for a reason, though not to be rested upon. Yeah. You know, like we are constantly growing out of things and people are learning and doing things, but these things that have like existed, it was because at some point, you know, like there, like you start to see and you start to notice all these things and it's not okay. I'm yeah. not condoning or yeah. accepting the fact that, you know, like it, it's okay to say, well, they're this or they're that and they're doing this and that's why they're going to do this and that. But you see that it's part of the way that things are going and that's what, is important for people to learn. And I think the good thing for people, one of the positive things for people to take away from working in restaurants is understanding that, mm -hmm. is understanding that very part of society is that like, yeah, you're gonna see these things that people talk about. You're gonna see that like, there's certain things that are true, but you're also gonna see <laughs> the other side that, well, no, in a good way, in a positive way that it's not about everybody doing yeah. that. It's sure. not everybody, you know, mm -hmm. you have those days, you have those moments where whatever it is, whatever that stereotype that you're expecting something, if you're expecting something bad or good or whatever, it proves you wrong. Yeah. And, you know, you have so many ups and downs and all of these things in the restaurant industry. And so that's why 
I think that it's important for you to realize that like this world is a lot more unpredictable than we think that it is. You know, like we yeah. shouldn't be as presumptuous as we are with things in this world. Well, we we are like creatures of pattern. You know, we're always looking for patterns and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then we are just just inundated with all of these kind of preset patterns that like when they do come true we tend to recognize those a little bit more yeah yeah and yeah like it's it's undeniable that you know you are going to see stereotypes you know uh um, make themselves true in front of you there and that just mm -hmm. goes into the basket of things that kind of reinforce that view but yeah. now i would could... argue a lot of people do not notice when they don't do that yeah because no. because that doesn't reinforce like the view that you it held should, and though. it Mentally, we're not wired to like do that, you know. Yeah. We're, we're wired to do that, but like understanding that concept, hack your fucking think, minds, people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is like the first step towards doing that. And yeah. one thing that actually that you bring this up, uh, you know, as far as uh, uh, that that on that same plane is uh, uh, somebody said, okay, who's the uh, most like what's what's the like ethnic group most likely to be like the worst drivers? You know, and everybody go, oh, Asian women. Yeah, With, but like statistically, <laughs> like they get in the least amount of car crashes like every year. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, so the statistics like don't necessarily add up to that and back up the theory. I'm just saying like, That's you know, question it. And I think, yeah. I think the main thing that you can learn from being in the restaurant is, is just, is empathy you know it's yeah. radical empathy it's you, that's what you should that thing. you that's should, you should but sometimes i mean right. i mean no. that's yeah. that's what is possible to yeah. learn obviously not everybody's gonna take that but we're know, preaching the positive just, if, I could put a, 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 just, yeah, if i could put a nice bow on everything yeah, it would be that common one. sense half the time right you know. common sense isn't common anymore People, well we're when it comes down to like uh do you guys have any appetite appetizers well if you look down on your <laughs> starters list, you know, you do like, little, yeah, you throw a little that, shade like that. But, but that's just... where the like, thing is like maybe mixing it up with something else that perhaps will give you some sort of yeah. empathy on top I of that. Because for me, it is it is Patience. the blend of working. Yeah. Maybe if I never went to all these stupid hippie festivals that try to preach all these fucking yeah. you know, positive ideals, uh, maybe I would have fallen down the path of like just fucking being bitter and hating every single person that comes into my restaurant. Yeah. I don't know. But I think that, you know, having as much experience as you can along with that and you know obviously travel and all that other stuff right these will like help you to understand the differences in people and perhaps be a little bit more patient yeah patient if, if i can inject one more little quote that i heard recently that i've been dying to kind of repeat that hate is just a lack of imagination you know i agree this is, this is a fun informative episode but we're not promoting anything other yeah. than just don't be an asshole. Just don't be an yeah, asshole. We're, we're promoting kindness, inclusion, and patience. And yeah. we're also promoting everybody make sure that you subscribe to this show that you are currently listening to exactly. uh, on iTunes, on Spotify, on your Stitchers and Google Plays and all that fun stuff because we are everywhere, people. Yes. All right. That's so get us right in your ear hole every Thursday. And then you know what? Actually, I'm going to say this is okay. If you want to just write the URL down in the tip line and then just write priceless in the total and then sign it. I cannot think of a server who would be more grateful to you than that for, uh, Bro, for finishing we'll off the meal fuck like them up with some truth. Give them some, like, make it worth their money. Exactly. Hey. Exactly. Hey. And of course, <laughs> don't forget to follow us on social media at the Bleed Cast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Myself, you can find me at Nobody Cares Phil on Twitter and Nobody at cares. Phil Nobody Cares on Instagram. Actually, I fucked that up. Flip it around. You get the gist. You get the gist. And real quick, I just wanted to plug Art in the Park this weekend. It's going to be Sunday, the 20th. Uh, January 20th at Peak Park in Buena Park. We are going to be giving away uh, at least 40 to 50 succulents for anybody Ooh. who comes. Um, and then you can also paint them. Free paints and brushes and all that stuff available. Uh, we're going to be celebrating growth in the new year. So that is our treat to you. Come out, enjoy dancing, music, fucking fun, creative times, collaborating, enjoying the company of other people who want to do and create dope shit so yeah come out to that we've got other events which it we'll will announce later suck. <laughs> that's true will it rain though it is expected to not rain on sunday so that's the good thing that's good but other than that yes it's been raining and you know bless that but uh 
check out the uh, Facebook event on yeah. uh, Psychedelic Lions Come Den check it out. or on the uh, Let It Bleed page you for any f- updates on that just in case. Where you could find that would obviously be uh, my personal page, Hood Rat Stuff, for Instagram, Hood Rat Stuff with three Fs, or you could do the Psychedelic underscore Lions underscore Den. I will update you guys on the stories and post on there. So yeah, come out, check it out, and as always, let it bleed.